In mathematics, the Cauchy integral theorem, also known as the cauchy goursat theorem in complex analysis, named after Augustin Louis Cauchy and Edouard Goursat, is an important statement about line integrals for holomorphic functions in the complex plane. Essentially, it says that if two different paths connect the same two points and a function is holomorphic everywhere in between the two paths, then the two path integrals of the function will be the same. Topic: <laughs> Statement of theorem The theorem is usually formulated for closed paths as follows, let U be an open subset of C which is simply connected, let f, U C be a holomorphic function, and let gamma be a rectifiable path in U whose start point is equal to its end point. Then gamma f z d z equals 0 display style point underscore gamma f z dz equals 0 a precise homology version can be stated using winding numbers the winding number of a closed curve around a point and not on the curve is the integral of f z 2 pi i where f z equals 1 z minus a around the curve it is an integer briefly the path integral along a jordan curve of a function holomorphic in the interior of the curve is zero Instead of a single closed path we can consider a linear combination of closed paths, where the scalars are integers. Such a combination is called a closed chain, and one defines an integral along the chain as a linear combination of integrals over individual paths. A closed chain is called a cycle in a region if it is homologous to zero in the region, that is, the winding number, expressed by the integral of 1, z minus a over the closed chain, is zero for each point a not in the region. This means that the closed chain does not wind around points outside the region. Then Cauchy's theorem can be stated as the integral of a function holomorphic in an open set taken around any cycle in the open set is zero. An example is furnished by the ring-shaped region. This version is crucial for rigorous derivation of Laurent series and Cauchy's residue formula without involving any physical notions such as crosscuts or deformations. The version enables the extension of Cauchy's theorem to multiply connected regions analytically. Topic discussion As was shown by Edouard Goursat, Cauchy's integral theorem can be proven assuming only that the complex derivative f z exists everywhere in U. This is significant, because one can then prove Cauchy's integral formula for these functions, and from that deduce these functions are in fact infinitely differentiable. The condition that U be simply connected means that U has no holes or, in homotopy terms, that the fundamental group of U is trivial, for instance, every open disk U equals Z, Z minus Z0, R display style U equals Z, Z, Z underscore 0, qualifies. The condition is crucial, consider gamma T equals E I T T element of 0 2 pi display style gamma t equals e caret it quad t in left 0 2 pi right which traces out the unit circle and then the path integral gamma 1 z d z equals 0 2 pi i e i t e I T D T equals zero two Pi I D T equals two Pi I Display style point underscore gamma frac one z dz equals int underscore zero carrot two pi i e carrot it over e carrot it dt equals int underscore zero carrot two pi i d t equals two pi i is non-zero. The Cauchy integral theorem does not apply here since f z equals one z display style f z equals one z is not defined and is certainly not holomorphic at z equals 0 display style z equals 0 one important consequence of the theorem is that path integrals of holomorphic functions on simply connected domains can be computed in a manner familiar from the fundamental theorem of real calculus let u be a simply connected open subset of c let f uc be a holomorphic function and let gamma be a piecewise continuously differentiable path in u with start point a and end point b if f is a complex antiderivative of f, then gamma f 
Z D Z equals F B minus F A display style in underscore gamma F Z D Z equals F B F A the Cauchy integral theorem is valid in slightly stronger forms than given above e.g. let u be a simply connected open subset of C and F A function which is holomorphic on u and continuous on u display style text style overline u let gamma display style gamma be a loop in u display style text style overline u which is uniform limit of a sequence gamma k display style gamma underscore k of rectifiable loops in u with bounded lengths then applying the cauchy theorem to the gamma k display style gamma underscore k and passing to the limit one has gamma f z d z equals 0 display style point underscore gamma f z d z equals 0 CEG Codira 2007 theorem 2.3 for a more general result The Cauchy integral theorem leads to Cauchy's integral formula and the residue theorem Topic <laughs> proof If one assumes that the partial derivatives of a holomorphic function are continuous, the Cauchy integral theorem can be proved as a direct consequence of Green's theorem and the fact that the real and imaginary parts of f equals u plus i v display style f equals u plus i v must satisfy the cauchy riemann equations in the region bounded by gamma display style gamma and moreover in the open neighborhood u of this region cauchy provided this proof but it was later proved by gorsat without requiring techniques from vector calculus or the continuity of partial derivatives we can break the integrand f display style f as well as the differential d z display style dz into their real and imaginary components f equals u plus i v display style display style f equals u plus i v d z equals D x plus i d y display style display style dz equals dx plus i dy. In this case, we have gamma f z d z equals gamma u plus i v d x plus i d y equals gamma u d x minus v d y plus i gamma v d x plus u d Y display style point underscore gamma f z dz equals point underscore gamma u plus i v dx plus i dy equals point underscore gamma u dx v dy plus i point underscore gamma v dx plus u dy. By Green's theorem, we may then replace the integrals around the closed contour gamma display style gamma with an area integral throughout the domain d display style d that is enclosed by gamma display style gamma as follows gamma u d x minus v d y equals d minus v x minus u y d x d y 
Display style oint underscore gamma u dx v dy equals i i n t underscore d left frac partial v partial x frac partial u partial y right dx dy gamma v d x plus u d y equals d u x minus v y d x d y Display style point underscore gamma v dx plus u dy equals i i n t underscore d left frac partial u partial x frac partial v partial y right dx dy. However, being the real and imaginary parts of a function holomorphic in the domain d display style d u display style u and v display style v must satisfy the cauchy riemann equations there u x equals v y display style partial u over partial x equals partial v over partial y u y equals minus v x display style partial u over partial y equals partial v over partial x we therefore find that both integrands and hence their integrals are zero. D minus v x minus u y d x d y equals d u y minus u y d x d y equals 0 display style i i n t underscore d left frac partial v partial x frac partial u partial y right dx dy equals i i n t underscore d left frac partial u partial y frac partial u partial y right dx dy equals 0 d u x minus v y D x D y equals D u x minus u x D x D y equals zero Display style i i n t underscore d left frac partial u partial x frac partial v partial y right dx dy equals i i n t underscore d left frac partial u partial x frac partial u partial x right dx dy equals zero. This gives the desired result gamma f z d z equals zero. Display style point underscore gamma f z dz equals zero. Topic. See also. Moreira's theorem. Methods of contour integration.